What's up, everybody? This is Christian Brindle. Welcome to episode 91 of the Everything Medicare podcast. I hope you're having a great day and a great, great week in general. And I hope you've enjoyed your summer because it's practically over. It went way too fast, if you ask me. Um, today, folks, we have some very, very exciting and special news that I want to share with you. The first news piece of news I have for you is that this podcast, the Everything Medicare podcast, by popular demand, is now on the wonderful, powerful platform of Stitcher. I've been asked a lot about Stitcher ever since we started the podcast, and it took some work. It took me... I'll be honest with you folks, I'm a person that's an insurance broker first and a podcaster second. And so it took me some time and it took our organization some time to be able to figure out how exactly to, 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 to get on that platform and do it the best way possible. The other thing is the, Medic the Everything Medicare podcast is going to be on iHeartRadio coming very, very soon and as well as Pandora. We're working on those two partnerships as we speak. So stay tuned for that. I will have more to say about that as it comes. And starting this episode, episode 91, we are doing video for the Everything Medicare podcast. So this podcast is being recorded. It's being filmed. Um, so that way that everybody that wants to can go on to YouTube and find this podcast and be able to listen to it at your discretion. Um, it's really, really exciting, folks. It's just, it's something that um, we wanted to do for some time but weren't sure what the best way to go about it would be. We're doing that now. We finally have gotten everything together and organized and we're, we're, we're going to be sh vi shooting video of every single episode of the Everything Medicare podcast that we do from this point going forward. Um, later on this week, I'm going to be interviewing Nick Williams, who is goes by the Medicare Millionaire, for those of you who might be familiar with him. He does um, Medicare agent sales training, but is also a long time expert in the industry, been working with people for many, many years on their Medicare, lots of experience, and we're just going to have a really, really interesting and fantastic conversation with Nick later on this week, so stay tuned for that. Um, with that being said, folks, let's dive in to this week's episode. Let's dive in to episode 91, and that is, what are the pitfalls of a Medicare Advantage plan? A lot of good there. A lot of good there, folks. And before I really get too much into this, before I really delve too much into this, I want to take the time and explain to you that everything in the Medicare industry, everything, prescription drug plans, Medicare supplement plans, Medicare Advantage plans, everything has its good, bad, and neutral, depending on who's looking at it. Keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. There's a lot of scumbag people out there that talk about Medicare that really uh, drives me nuts, but they really try to paint the picture for you. They try to paint a narrative. They try to, to, to create a narrative for you that uh, you need to go one way or the other every single time, and it's freaking ridiculous, okay? So keep this in mind, okay? That is not the case ever. Not now. Not 10 years ago, not ever, okay? Medicare has choices for a reason. There's different ways you can set up your Medicare for a reason, and there's a reason why people do both. It's because people are specific on what they need for their needs, preferences, what prescriptions they take, what doctors they see, how often they travel, everything, and all of the above. So please keep this in mind as you're, you're taking my comments into consideration. But Medicare Advantage, like anything else, has some pitfalls. Like I said, there's a lot of good there. There's a lot to like about it. Um, for one, the low premiums. In a lot of areas, Medicare Advantage plans don't charge a premium. And if they do charge a premium, it's typically fairly low. Now, this isn't the case in every market. I've seen plenty of markets where the, the premiums aren't anything to be too excited about, but for the most part, you're looking at $0 premium plans in most markets, low premiums, if you will. It's 
it's it's inexpensive. It's inexpensive. Whereas you know the other side of the coin with a Medicare supplement, you have to pay usually a pretty hefty extra monthly premium for the Medicare supplement, depending on your age. It's probably always going to be north of a hundred bucks a month. Um, in most cases, might vary. And I tell people it should vary in my market in Utah. What I tell people, it's going to vary anywhere between probably 80 bucks a month to maybe 150 depending on what you want, if you're turning 65. But if you're in Florida, it's probably going to be anywhere between 150 bucks a month, maybe 200 250 you know, depending on the zip code you're in. And different markets are going to be different. Keep this in mind, okay? But that's usually... Nine times out of ten, in most areas, most markets looked at as an advantage of Medicare Advantage, no pun intended, is the low premiums. The other thing is you don't have to pay extra for the drug coverage in most cases. Most Medicare Advantage plans, there are some Medicare Advantage plans that don't come with drug coverage, but most Medicare Advantage plans come with prescription drug coverage all wrapped into one. You know, typically you'll have your medical benefits, which are, you know, far superior than what Medicare would be on its own, you know, because with Medicare A and B, you pay they pay 80% of the medical bills and you get stuck with 20%. They're almost always better medical benefits because most of the time they're structured in a way that you pay a copay. I mean, if you've been listening to me for some time, you know how Medicare Advantage plans work. And Medicare Advantage plans work really well for some people. I can't stress this enough, but there is some bad and we're getting to it. Medicare Advantage plans have every there's a convenience factor to them for a lot of people you have your medical prescription dental vision hearing all wrapped into one plan but let's talk about what the negatives are and for those of you who have listened to me for some time you know I love to get my point across and I love to make make a narrative for you in the form of a story because if you're anything like me I remember stories stories I grip on to stories I remember stories that I'm told because everybody likes to hear a story. I've so I'm someone that's worked with people on Medicare for years, you know. And if you're watching, if you're watching this podcast for the first time on YouTube, and you're watching this on video, I've worked with a lot of people over the years on their Medicare. You know, I've been I grew up around this industry. I came into it. Um, my my dad was an early pioneer in the late 80s and early 90s for people on Medicare. Um, back then, it was a, a more of a niche market. You know, it was kind of something that you did on the side, you know, or an extra thing. It wasn't really looked at as something that you could specialize in. Oof, boy, were they wrong. Boy, were they wrong. Because it's something that needs to be specialized in. Not only can it be specialized in for someone like myself, it needs to be specialized in. But I've worked with a lot of people over the years in their Medicare. A lot of people over the years. I started in this business incredibly young. I've seen so much at such a young age. I'm 27 years old, for those of you who don't know. 27 years old, turned 27 earlier this month. My birthday was the 13th. But I've seen a lot, well beyond my years. And one thing I'm, I see, and most of my stories are not one person particularly that I'm talking about. Usually it's something that I see over and over and over and over and over again. The names and the faces change, but the situation typically tends to be the same. I'm going to tell a story, and we're going to say a, there's, a, there's a lady that comes to Christian. Okay, There's a lady that comes to Christian to talk to about, about her Medicare. We'll say her name is Mary. Okay, Mary. Mary has a lot of medical conditions. Okay. Mary has a lot of medical conditions. Mary sees a lot of different doctors. Now, some people like to stay in the same group of doctors for their doctors. You know, their dermatologist is part of the same network in the same group of doctors as her primary care physician and her physical therapist is, is, is attached in the same way. They're all part of the same group, if you get my drift, part of the same network of doctors. But not everybody. Mary, in this case, sees doctors that are part of lots of different groups, lots of different groups spread around. She, um, she sees multiple different doctors, different specialists. She sees them on the regular, and there are, none of them are attached to each other. They're all part of competing hospital and doctor networks. And the reason, the reason why she does this is because the different hospital and doctor networks, the different clinic networks have different specialties that they're good at. Mary knows this. Mary's smart. Mary's not. Mary's, Mary's a sharp cookie. 
Mary investigates this. She finds out who the best dermatologist is. She finds out who the best physical therapist is. She finds out who the best doctor is for her primary care needs. She finds out who the best heart doctor is. She finds out who the best every doctor is. So Mary goes to where she wants to go. She doesn't necessarily get attached to one group of doctors, which is typically my recommendation for my own clients. Mary is really smart when it comes to picking her doctors. But Mary doesn't make a great decision when it comes to picking her insurance plan. Mary sees a commercial. I'm not going to say the name of an insurance company, but it's some one that you're probably all very familiar with. Mary sees a commercial. Zero dollar premium plan. You may qualify for XYZ. You may qualify for free dental, vision, hearing, blah, 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 blah. We've all seen it in the mail, on TV. Mary didn't take the time to do what you're doing right now. Anybody that's listening to this, Mary did not take the time to educate herself on what her options are and what you need to know and what the good, bad, and ugly are on any choice that Mary could possibly make. So, Mary sees a commercial. Mary says, I'm turning 65. I'm getting on Medicare. Zero dollar premium sounds good to me. It, it, covers, it covers medical, it covers prescriptions, it covers dental, vision, hearing. What else do I need? Mary calls this 1-800 number, signs up with somebody over the phone that doesn't know jack about her market. And these big corporations, whether it's a particular insurance company or whether it's um, an agency that just does you know, call center work, there's a lot of really good call centers out there. You know, I just inter- did an interview last week with Eric Fierro, um, who runs a Medicare call center. His call center is great. There's a lot of really good call centers out there, but there's a lot of call centers also that the people don't know hell or high water what your plan is or what's good about that market. They've never even heard of where you live. So they just sign them up for a particular plan. This happens all the time. Mary then has her plan start. Same day as her Medicare. Doesn't pay any premium for it. She says, oh, this is great. Mary then comes to find out she tries to go to her doctor. Doctor's not covered. One, her primary care doctor's covered, but none of these specialists that Mary likes to go to is covered because the plan she signed up for happened to have a tremendously exclusive and tiny network. This is a problem, folks. Stay with me into segment two, and we're going to talk about the biscuits and gravy about Medicare Advantage plans. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, everybody. This is segment two of this week's Everything Medicare podcast, episode 91, first episode that we've ever done video on, and it can be found on YouTube, as always. Look for us on every platform. We're on so many platforms, the Everything Medicare podcast. Like I mentioned, we're working on a partnership with Pandora, iHeartRadio, and we just worked out a good partnership where the podcast can now be found on Stitcher. And listen to this podcast all the way to the end, because I have an offer for anybody that wants to help us get more popular and move up the ranks in Stitcher. Right now, we're the most, the second most popular Medicare-centered podcast on uh, Apple Podcasts and iTunes. Very, very proud of that. We're probably the second, if not maybe... Uh, if we're having a bad day, probably the third most popular Medicare-centered podcast on the internet in general. But but if we can move up the ranks in Stitcher, folks, you can help us get our message to more people. Okay? We can get our message to more people all around the world. But enough of all of that, folks. Let's talk about what you came to hear about today, and that's the pitfalls and the downside of a Medicare Advantage plan. Okay, so what did you gather from segment one? What did you get out of it, of my story with Mary? Because that's something that so many people do, folks. They just see an advertisement for a $0 premium plan, or they, they find a plan in your particular market that hypothetically speaking, comes with a lot of dental. And there's some plans that do, some plans that don't. Not all markets have dental-rich programs available. Not all markets have $0 premium plans available. A plan could look downright ridiculous 
and how good the benefits are on paper. But if you don't check everything, it could be a horrible fit for you. <laughs> Think about this, folks. You, okay, what Mary did in segment one in my story is Mary did not take the time to understand how this plan worked. Mary just signed up for a plan that's a $0 premium plan. Didn't get the full explanation, didn't do the research, didn't didn't realize that Medicare Advantage plans come with networks of, and hospitals and doctors. And Mary paid for it because once you're enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan, unless you have some kind of life-changing event, you really can't get out of it until the Medicare enrollment period. You're kind of stuck with it, folks. It's really a crappy deal if you do this wrong. You ever hear a, a neighbor or a friend just say, oh, Medicare Advantage, I don't want anything to do with Medicare freaking Advantage. Medicare Advantage, my sister had Medicare Advantage, or I had Medicare Advantage, and blah, 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 blah. It's because they didn't know what they were signing up for. I guarantee it, folks. I, I guarantee it. I've never worked with somebody that's had a bad experience with Medicare Advantage that, did, that, that, that does not fall into this type of category. Okay? Networks are a huge thing. Prescription coverage is also a huge thing. Not all Medicare Advantage plans are created equal when it comes to these things. Prescription drug coverage is a big one. Prescription drug coverage is huge because all Medicare Advantage plans that cover prescriptions have different formularies. They have prescriptions they cover well. They have prescriptions they don't cover well. This is vital. Because if you take a lot of prescriptions and you sign up for a plan that doesn't cover half of them, of course it's going to not work well. Of course. No, duh. I mean, people people don't understand what they sign up for. And I'm just not that type of person. So I have a hard time understanding it sometimes. But a lot of people, see, I'm the type of person to wear if you tell me that the sky is blue, I want to know. I want to see it for myself. I want to know how how blue is the sky? What shade of blue? Are you sure it's not turquoise? Are you sure it's not green? Are you sure it's not purple? How do you know for sure? Have you looked at the sky recently? I'm a little bit ridiculous. Some of you are, some of you aren't. And if you're not like that, that's okay. <laughs> Believe me, my wife wishes I wasn't like that, I'm sure. But it's not a bad idea to be like that in a sense at least to a little bit of a degree, at least to a little bit, because you need to understand what you're signing up for. This is huge. When I'm working with somebody, folks, on their Medicare, I make sure, I try to do everything I can to make sure that they understand the program as well as they possibly can. That's why I love about this podcast so much, because it gives you a, a, a way that you can learn about this stuff at your own speed and at your own convenience podcast is great in that aspect, but not everybody's going to hear the podcast. I'd love for everybody to hear the podcast, but not everybody's going to hear the podcast. A lot of people are. A lot of people are, but not everybody. What are the other downsides of Medicare Advantage? Well, Medicare Advantage plans, obviously, medical coverage is going to be nowhere near as good as it would be for a Medigap or a Medicare supplement, because with a Medigap or Medicare supplement, you have basically full coverage or very close to it. Right? With a Medicare Advantage plan, you basically have co-pays for pretty much everything. Okay, so co-pays. Now, granted, is a Medicare Advantage plan better off for you than having just straight Medicare by itself? I ran into somebody that I was working with yesterday. Wonderful person, wonderful man, wonderful human being. I love him already. I just met him. Um, but he had just Medicare, A and B, since March because he turned 65. That's when his Medicare started. He did not have anything else to go with it. And he's had tremendous bills adding up that he doesn't understand why he has to pay for them. They've been going to collections and it's just been a mess. He would have been better off with a Medicare Advantage plan because with original Medicare, basically you have your deductibles, you have your co-insurances, but you pay 80% of the bill. Excuse me, they pay 80% of the bill. It's Friday. When I record when I'm recording this it's Friday. They pay 80% of the bill, you pay 20. Okay. 20% 20 can add up real quickly, not to mention the deductibles that it took you to get there. With a Medicare Advantage plan, you're basically are limited to a pretty reasonable copay. 
And the copay is going to vary depending on your market. But a Medicare Advantage plan is going to be better than nothing. But it's not going to be as good of medical coverage as a Medicare supplement is. And that's just a fact. That's just a fact, folks. The other thing about Medicare Advantage plans that probably doesn't get talked about enough is pre-authorizations. Okay. I had a client that I worked with earlier on this year who needed a surgery done and she needed it done quickly. Typically Medicare Advantage plans take about two weeks to approve something, whereas Medicare you don't really have that issue. Medicare needs to approve things, don't get me wrong, but Medicare Advantage plans, they're, they're, they're basically specifically ran by insurance companies, folks. Just remember what a Medicare Advantage plan is. A Medicare Advantage plan is basically you're running your Medicare through a private insurance company. They take the place of your Medicare. And that takes a big burden off of Medicare's shoulders, so in exchange, Medicare agrees to fund this private insurance company every month to take care of you. So they come in and they take over. They have to cover everything that Medicare covers, but that doesn't mean they can't make you jump through hoops to get there. Now, pre-authorizations are not an issue. If your doctor's office you know, schedules your... Usually if you're scheduling a surgery, your surgery is being scheduled out, right, for couple of weeks to a month, that's plenty of time for a pre-authorization to get filed, completed, everything that needs to be done with 99.9% .9 of Medicare Advantage plans. But sometimes the doctor's offices waver. Sometimes the doctor's offices drag their feet. They don't realize the urgency. So you might run into that too. You might have to get a surgery pushed off farther than you want to because of a pre-authorization for something. That's real. That's real, but I don't think it's that bi as big of a deal if you're aware of it and the doctor's office is aware of it. But can be it, it can be difficult. Medicare supplements are going to be much easier for you, the customer, in my opinion, in that regard. But it doesn't mean every single person that's listening should sign up with a Medicare supplement. Medicare Advantage is going to be great for a lot of people, but you have to understand how they work. Keep this in mind. You have to understand how they work. Stay with me. Don't go anywhere. Let's transition into segment three. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. This is our third and final segment of this week's Everything Medicare podcast. Well, not this week's. I'm still in the mode, folks, that we do it once a week. We've been doing that forever. This is today's Medicare podcast. But we do three episodes a week now of the Everything Medicare podcast. They air on Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. So just keep in mind... Like I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, this podcast is being recorded as will every future episode on video and it will be found on YouTube.com. So go search our YouTube channel, Christian Brindle. Um, you'll see a cartoon emoji face. Um, that's supposed to be me. Looked more like me when I started. Um, I've aged a little bit in the meantime. Um, but you'll find the video on there um, under episode 91 of the Everything Medicare podcast. Folks, I just can't thank you enough for listening and helping us reach so many people with all your support. You fa you're fantastic, and you know it just does my heart good to to be able to get our message and spread it across the country like we have. As always, folks, with the enrollment period approaching, if you'd like to work with me, Christian. Um, and my organization, Christian Brindle Insurance Services, on your Medicare program. We currently work with people in the states of Utah because that's where our business is, Florida because I lived there temporarily, Oregon, and Idaho. Those are the four states we work with people on your Medicare plan. Basically, folks, my organization and my company, we work with all of the largest insurance companies in the industry. Our job is to sort through the options and help you find the best available for plan based on your needs and preferences. If you're already on Medicare and you're just not sure if you, you're on the best thing for you and you just want to be sure that you can't do better, or maybe you're turning 65 and you just feel lost and confused on what your choices are, and you live in one of those four states, give my office a call at 801-255-5340, 801-255-5340, and let's talk. No cost, no obligation. I don't charge a thing to work with you. 
If you feel more comfortable sending me an email, however, you're more than welcome to do that as well. My email address, my personal email, is Christian, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N, B as in boy, at xmission.com. Christian B at X M I S S I O N dot com. Christian B at xmission.com. As always, folks, thank you so much for listening. Um, and I've been saving this offer till the end. People always ask me, how much does an agent get paid to do a certain type of Medicare plan? So it's no secret. Us as agents, we get compensated to provide you service. Some agents do, some agents don't. But every, but, but every agent should be providing you service that you work through because they get compensated from the plan. Me personally, I've never really given a damn about which program or company pays us the most. I don't care. I'm going to make a recommendation based on that specific person that I'm talking to. That's always been my approach. Um, my dad taught me early on. My dad pioneer, long-time um, advocate for people on Medicare. My dad always taught me we'd rather have one happy client or customer than 50 unhappy ones. And I've latched on to that, and I believe that 100%. So I make recommendations all the time where I make the least amount of money possible as an agent. Now, keep in mind, this our commission gets paid by the insurance companies. Um, the insurance, it's, it doesn't cost a cent more than it would going directly through the insurance company. Um, it's not a different price or a different program. It's the exact same product you can get on your own. It's just you can get some, some, some year-round customer service by working with an organization like ours. No cost, no obligation, but we're there for you if you need us. We'll keep you up to date on changes. That's what we do. But what I'm offering is we need to get higher on Stitcher. Stitcher's a huge platform. If I can get... If you, if you folks can help help us get 10 five-star reviews on Stitcher in the next two weeks, so when would that be? When would that be? I'll give you a, a deadline that this needs to be done by. 10 five-star reviews. So you'll be here in this podcast on the 2nd of September. So two weeks from today, which would be September 16th, if we get 10 five-star reviews on the Everything Medicare podcast on Stitcher by September 16th, I will do a special podcast episode where I disclose how much commission my organization makes on different products. I know everybody wants to know that. I will pull the blanket off. And it's not just me. This is pretty much every, every, every person in my industry. Oh, people in the industry aren't going to like me doing that. But I'll do it for you. I will disclose this down to the T. I won't talk about particular insurance companies because I can't. Particular insurance companies don't want, want us to, to talk about them or name them. But I will, I will tell you how much an agent makes on each particular product, roughly. You ever want to know that? Help us get more reviews on Stitcher. And you got it. But if you don't, I'm never going to disclose it. It doesn't matter to me on what our commission is. It doesn't matter to me. I never care. It's, it doesn't even come into my brain when we're making a recommendation. I want to make it the best recommendation for the person I'm talking to. Again, I'll, I'll remind you of this. But that's not the case for all the agents. Guarantee freaking it. That's why there's such scumbag agents out there. There's a lot of great agents out there, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of bad ones too. As always, folks, thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for watching. If you watch this on video, have a great day and have a great week. And we will be bringing you another episode shortly. Talk to you soon.